Hi, I'm Dustin and welcome to Overworked Logic. In this video, I'm going to show you part two of a room combined system with simple windows. Before I start, I want to mention two things. One, the example code is available with the link below that you'll see. And two, a comment on my initial video. One thing I kind of glossed over is the scope of what we're doing and the limitations that we're imposing by saying that one of the rooms always has to be the master. This is a complicated scenario and there's many different ways to approach the problem. You wanna make sure that you're not painting yourself into a corner and choosing a solution without getting customer feedback and sign off on how the system should actually behave. So it's probably more of a universal solution where any room could combine with a room adjacent to it and create all these different groups. Now, I just found that that would be extremely hard to explain and it gets really complicated really fast. And I also have an example of an exact system that I'm building right now that uses this methodology. So that's why this video is based on that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you how the touch panel is laid out. There's two basic pages, a logo page and a main page. The logo page has a press to start and a combined button. The combined button pops up the option to change combination modes. We're limiting it so that only the panel in room one will allow this to pop up and change things unless it's in a combined situation. We've also got a lights pop up and you'll notice there's a serial with the room name. The actual main page only has a couple options for sources. We have the volume. Remember we're using the hard key so there'll be a volume up and down. There'll be a lights button that will bring up the lights sub page on this page and the power button hard key will bring up the shutdown sub page. I've basically gone through and assigned joins for all of these. Before I get into simple windows, I want to go over something that I didn't quite clarify in the initial video. I had talked about connecting the touch panel to the state logic and the state logic to the room logic. What I didn't mention is that there's actually a combination of control cross points and equipment cross points to make this happen. So the touch panel has a control cross point that connects to an equipment cross point inside the state logic container. The state logic has a control cross point that connects to an equipment cross point inside the room logic container. And the way the connection actually happens is when the combined mode is changed by the user, it will connect the touch panel to the appropriate state logic, and it will also connect the room logic to the appropriate state logic. This layout of the whole system shows what that looks like just with all the three different rooms. Now my actual approach here is the touch panel, the actual touch panel. We have all these joins and I've defined digital joins one through 60, analog joins one through 10 and serial joins one through 10. That's enough for a system like this to bring a conduit of information into the touch panel. So I've kept it very generic at this point and that gets translated as it connects into a cross point in the state logic. Now in the state logic is where we start to give those things context. We start to define what they mean. So for example, it's not press one anymore or press five or 10, it's press source laptop, it's press lights, press volume up, etc. Then it goes to the logic and it's processed and comes out as feedback to the panel now I show these arrows just going one way, but it's a two-way street. You get the feedback as well. And once the logic determines that certain things need to go to the actual room, that goes out the control cross point that talks to the room logic. So let's see what that looks like in simple. I've got my three touch panels defined here. I've got my touch panel logic section, my state logic section, and my room logic section. Then I've got some other things for more global operations that need to happen. So as you're building this, because it's modular, we're really looking at room one, touch panel one, state logic one, and room logic one. Once we create those, then we copy them and search and replace and replace that RL1 with RL2 and RL3 and likewise for all the other sections. Now you have to change the cross point joins and you have to be careful that you're doing things that aren't going to copy over things that you want to keep. So I've got some sections in here with unique properties. I'll touch on that in a second. So you'll see here from the touch panel, I've defined all these digital presses just very generically. I've got my analogs and my serials. And I've also had to carry in my hard keys. Now these can only be one thing, so I didn't go generic on these. And this all goes into the control cross point. 
So remember from this diagram here, these are generic into this control cross point. So this cross point here is what's going to be sending into the state logic. And then we've got a connection manager. I'll talk on that in a second that makes the connection from the touch panel to the state logic. Inside the state logic, we've got an equipment cross point that's basically the receiver from the touch panel. And this is, like I said, where we're starting to define the context of what these presses mean. So we haven't defined everything. We only define the ones that we care about. So start, combine, pop up, shut down, yes, cancel. These are all the actual joins on the panel. And in a normal system that wasn't using room combine, these would be defined on the panel itself. You wouldn't have all these generic things. They would be useless. In this situation, I find it easier to approach it this way because you've created a path and you can add and adjust things in here a little bit easier. It's a little bit easier for it to be modular. Now you don't have to do it this way. I just found in my experience, it's more beneficial to keep things generic until you get into the state logic section. It gives you more adjustability later. So my state logic, I'm not gonna go through everything that happens, but we're controlling the page flipping we're controlling the pop-ups and we're controlling the source selection. Now this I want to draw your attention to. Instead of using actual source numbers, I'm using virtual source numbers, which is an index for this particular block of logic. And what that means is I can remap it to have a different context based on which room we are in. This is kind of an advanced concept, but I used it here and I just wanted to show you a little bit about it. So in my state logic, I've got this unique properties. And this is where I have basically the remap. Remember we have the two displays in each room. We have a virtual source for each display. And the way that I built this is that we would be able to copy SL1 and rename it as SL2, copy it again and rename it as SL3. And this way, I don't have to change what these virtual sources are. I just have to change what they mean and this unique property part is something that we're not going to copy. So it's going to look different for the different states. So if I go back to here, the virtual source of one would be input number one for the actual source on a switcher. I mentioned before that this is going to be video over IP. I decided after the first video that I would keep the actual hardware out of the program because there's just too much. It's just too complicated to explain it. So we're just using inputs as if they were a regular DM switcher. VC codec for room one, this is input one on a switcher, input two on a switcher. VC codec in room two is input three on a switcher, input four on a switcher. The room three codec is input five and six on the switcher. And then laptop in room one is seven, laptop in room two is eight, and laptop in room three is nine. So what we're doing here, the virtual source, laptop, is number two and my little remap module looks at the input of number two and gives it the value of seven so that's the physical switcher input for that laptop the specific laptop in room number one for video conference one will stay as one for the left monitor and on the right monitor input one will actually mean two which is the second output on that video conference so that kind of explains the virtual mapping the reason I added it in this example program is it makes it easier to copy your state logic and not have to rework a bunch of things. When the cross points are connected together in a room combined scenario, then everything will just do what it's supposed to do. If they're connected to the state logic from room one, then they'll be showing the video conference from room one. And that's kind of why I did it this way. I also want to show you the text. I added this serial text that shows which room and depending on the combined mode, it will change what the text is, and this will reflect on any panel that's combined with this one. And where this comes from, it's fed from the state logic equipment cross point. There's this property called room name, and we follow that back, and we selectively have three different buffers based on the combined mode that the system is in. Combined mode is kind of a global variable. I'll show you that in a second. I just want to show where these are actually changed, where we change the text. These are different for the different areas. State logic one, when it's uncombined, will have room one name. When one and two are combined, we'll have room one two name. And I've defined these as serial strings kind of globally. When one, two, and three are combined, we'll have room one two three name. And I'll show you where these come from. Under the system section in room names, I have 
individual names for each rooms and the two combinations that we have that are valid. Again, this starts to get a little bit convoluted, but the system is kind of complicated. So I wanted to actually include enough to make this a usable example, aside from the fact that we don't have actual hardware connected. So now let's look at how the combine mode actually changes. So in this panel, you press combine and you get these three options. These options are fed into a global combine mode, which sets an analog for the current system combine mode. And then we just use an equate to basically have feedback of which mode it's in. We use that for a number of different things, but the main thing is to define how our connections are established. The way that we keep the combine mode button only showing on the panel in room one is actually a visibility join. And this doesn't really follow the philosophy of everything else that I built here. I just wanted to show an easy way that you could have a buffer to define basically a one or a zero and just run these right into the panel definitions themselves at join 70. It was a last minute addition that I wanted to basically restrict it just to the panel in room one. So going back to this drawing here, touch panel logic connects to state logic when the combined mode changes and room logic connects to state logic when the combined mode changes. These both happen at the same time. So there's a connection manager inside the touch panel logic. That's an equipment cross point connect and a connection manager as well in the room logic section that connects it to the state logic. So let's take a look at those. The symbol here, we've got a control ID and equipment ID and a signal to connect and a signal to disconnect from C, disconnect from control. Now these analog values are actually defined in the system area and these are never going to change. Touch panel in room one is going to be control cross point one. Touch panel in room two is going to be control cross point two. And touch panel in room three is going to be control cross point three. What is going to change, however, is the equipment cross point that it's connecting to based on the mode. So these initializes here, we're defining based on the combined mode, what should touch panel one connect to? And it's going to connect to equipment cross point one. That's basically state logic one in all modes, it's always going to be that way for room one touch panel. Second touch panel is going to connect to room two if it's uncombined for state logic two, but if it's combined one, two, it's going to connect to state logic one. And if it's combined one, two, three, it's going to connect to state logic one. Touch panel three, if it's uncombined, it's going to be connected to state logic three. If it's combined one, two, it will still be connected to state logic three. If it's combined one, two, three, it will be connected to state logic one. And then we just do a little tricky thing here with a serial analog logic wave pulse, where anytime the equipment ID changes, and that's changed down here, we have a short pulse that will disconnect from control. So it will disconnect the touch panel from what it was connected to. And the steady state of the system, when it settles down this out star, it's going to connect the control and equipment IDs that are specified together there. So that's whatever this changes to. And then we've done something similar for connecting the state logic to the room logic, where the equipment logic for the room IDs themselves is not going to change, but it's the state logic. It's which ones we are connecting to based on the combined mode that's going to change. So we've got analog initializes again, where Room logic one will always connect to cross point 11. So that's always going to connect here. Room logic two will connect to different combinations and same with room logic three. I don't think I need to go through every single thing here. You can see it in this diagram. And then underneath the room logic section where we have this connection to SL, we have a similar method. The only thing that's different here is we're disconnecting from equipment. We're not disconnecting from control. Once it settles down, then we connect the specified control ID and equipment ID together. Now, when we compile this program, what we're going to get is this cross point list. It's a compile option in simple windows that by default, it does it. If you don't have it, you can go to options. It's in preferences. I don't want to show it right now. These are handy for troubleshooting to figure out where these are in a big program. You can see this S-2.1.1. You can trace it down here and figure out where it is. And it will also show you what the equipment ID and the control ID is. Now, once you've loaded it, you can use the console command route simstat to view the cross point connections. Now, I always find this kind of confusing because it shows you everything both ways. 
that shows the control to the equipment and the corresponding equipment to control. So this line here is actually the same thing as this. You can filter it out by going route sim stat minus C colon one to show where control cross point one is currently routed. And this is runtime. So this is based on the current combined mode. So you'll see we've got it all separated and one to one, two to two, three to three, 11 to 11, 12 to 12, 13 to 13. If we combine one and two, then we'll see the serials change and these two operate together. But you'll also see if you run route simstat again, one and one are tied together, two and one are tied together, that's new. Three and three are still the same. 11 and 11 are together. 12 is actually not connected to anything because we're bypassing this state logic section. And 13 is connected to 13 because that room is still on its own. If we go through and combine them all together, and now we'll see that one is connected to one, two is connected to one, three is connected to one, 11 is connected to 11, 12, and 13, and we're bypassing 12 and 13 because we're using state logic from room one, basically. This is just the duplication of that expression above. Sometimes if you get somebody's code that has cross points, you have to compile it and actually run it to see how things are connected because it isn't exactly obvious if you just look at the simple code. So hopefully you got a lot of value from this series of videos about room combine. Now it's a pretty complicated topic and I understand that it really gets confusing at certain points. I basically wanted to give you some ways to approach this from more of a modular and systematic fashion. And you can apply this type of philosophy to any type of system really, but just as you're looking at room combine, you really want to boil it down to how this thing works together in systematic blocks. And also, like I mentioned at the start of this video, make sure to define what the scope is and make sure that your clients have signed off on how it's supposed to work before you paint yourself into a corner because that's one of the worst things you could do. If you like this video, please like it here on YouTube. Comment below. I'm sure there's a lot of discussion about it because like I said, there's many different ways to approach this problem. And please subscribe to the channel. You'll get notifications when we release new videos and we're trying to help Crestron programmers up their capabilities and lower their stress by giving them more accessible ways to approach programming problems. Thanks and have a great day.